That's why Mr. Oh Yang Jing Wu, he's from the early nationalist era, and he's a very famous Buddhist scholar. He said that Buddhism is a necessity for today's society. Because if today there is if there's none of this teaching of wisdom, like Buddhism, for let, let's not talk about others, myself, I couldn't change my habit without guidance. After learning only then I realized I do have a problem called I identify a problem called bad temper or lying. After learning, I understood what Buddha said words can bring calamities if not used wisely. Uh, if it's used unwisely, it brings disasters to yourself. Also, you will take away your merits. All your goods, all goods that happens to you will be will, will taken away because of your own doing or bad words. And you will cause a lot of, you will plant a lot of seeds of enmity, 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 or cause making a lot of enemies. And then beyond that, like virtues wise, like if you're not being uh, respectful and loving to your own parents, then your own children will do the same as you do to your own parents. So none of this is superstitious. Using what you read from the sutra, what you heard from the Dharma talk, you must use it every second, every moment, every minute to fix, to transform your weakness, to overcome your er uh, your, your habit, bad habits, to direct yourself, to guide yourself using the teaching, uh, to implement this teaching in your own life, that way you can guide yourself into a better life. It is like a lamp uh, that lights light up the path in front of us so that we can walk on the right one. So this is a simple introduction of how we choose correctly of what to learn from Buddhism because it has so many options because a fail, a wrong choice will cause you to use all the energy with no result at all you spend, it wasted your energy basically, your life is your energy like in university after learning all these years have you used it have we be able to use what you learn in your life? Right? If you didn't able to use what you learn, then you wasted your time. Everyone has the experience when after spending so many years in education institution. Therefore, in Buddhism, the same thing happens. We need to choose correctly. Correct to what? Correct to our capability. Correct to our living environment. Uh, suitable to our current realities, our, uh, our era. So, uh, once we understood what to choose among many methods of Buddhism learning, we also need to pick where do we start when practicing Buddhism, right? How do we get real benefit from Buddhism? We must know about this as well. Like when I first arrived in Taiwan, a lot of people introduce many ways. This is good. This that method is good. And I'm confused where to start because I am looking for somewhere to start. Everything has a start. Only then you could learn when you know where to start. Only then you can build up and become successful. So this is what we call a right understanding. And the right understanding in this context is choosing the where to start our journey of cultivations of Buddhism. Otherwise, people will look at you and say, you, you after learning so many years, you know nothing about what you learn, or you are clueless about it. Um, it becomes superstition then, because you don't know what you're doing. There were people, you know, coming to my, the temple I recite in and say how Buddhism, how he perceived Buddhism is, you know, he doesn't understood what Buddhism is from his, uh, from what he see on the outside. 
feels like that, uh, superstitious and all that. So therefore, right now, we're talking about what does all these names, statutes of Buddha mean? Uh, what does the name and statutes and their post of Buddha and Bodhisattva refers to? Uh, what are they trying to symbolize? Otherwise, every time we ch pray to these Buddha and Bodhisattvas, we do not know why we're doing that. What we're trying to do from this. Uh, if you ask one of the Buddhists and say, why are you praying to the Buddhas? No. We need to be able to question, I mean, answer it. Sorry. So this is what we call, in Buddhism, is we call it expedient means. Or using a modern word is using a highly sophisticated uh, art to educate. An artful education. And Buddhism, since its inception 2,500 years ago, it has developed into an art form in when it talks, it, it talks about using of art to educate the masses. Using, the, for now, technology, we have movies, musics, and all that to express the educational content of Buddhism. And in old days, when I read the movies of, when I started, when I read the movies, watched the movie of Six Patra of Zen Buddhism in China, Master Hui Neng, right? Uh, I read his sutra, the Six Patriarch Sutra. Uh, I learned about him from this art format, from this media. Uh, and I felt a sense of respect and reverence to it. And therefore, this is one example of how art was being used to educate. And this is necessary. Uh, it's necessary for us to know how they educate and how we learn using these techniques. For example, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Bodhisattva uh, Siddhikapa or Dita, uh, no matter their image, their name, uh, or offering the ceremony, offering of flower, of water, of fruits. What are they trying to symbolize? What are they trying to tell us doing this? Um, it, do us doing this is to remind us in our daily life. Uh, to cultivate the virtues each of these action or if of each of these Buddha and Bodhisattva represents. They all symbolize a certain virtues we should learn. So what kind of virtues? For example, in, in sum, to summarize them, it, it taught us to be gentle, to be kind, to be respectful, to be frugal, uh, and also let others go first. You know, when, when it comes to our daily life. Beyond that is the precepts. No killing, no sexual misconduct, no stealing, no lying, no slanderous words, and no uh, intoxicants. So those are all about the conducts of our daily lives. Help us to regulate our conducts, restrain ourselves. And right now, in our daily life, we have to use this conduct to, to, to live right, with other people. Right? If everyone has no good manners and lack of conduct, lack of restraint, it becomes hard to deal with. It, life becomes harder, right? In work, in family, in everywhere. So if you look at the world, people nowadays, most people, how are they behaving? A lot of arrogance, a lot of bias, a lot of... Um, uh, like tendency to control others, controls to um, disrespect easily, to be disrespectful to others, not giving other people space, right? Not just other people, strangers, but to their own family, parents, siblings, teachers, 